Mr. Jesse here with the Burton Public Library bringing you my first virtual book talk. So today I'm excited because I'm talking about one of my favorite subjects, outdoor adventure. It's one of the things that I started reading when I was a young reader and I still read to this day. So I'm going to go through one of my favorite authors um, that I found as a young reader and then talk about some of the other outdoor adventure authors that I've encountered along the way. So hope you enjoy it. And not surprising, I'm going to start off with Gary Paulson who is really prolific, which means he wrote a lot. He grew up in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and his life was a lot of up and down. He recently wrote a book that's a lot like an autobiography. Um, it's kind of like a memoir. It's called Gone to the Woods and surviving a lost childhood. And so this gives us a really good look at what his life was like. And the really cool thing is it reads just like one of his novels. So a novel is a story that's kind of made up. And that's what he did with his really well-known series, Hatchet. So he wrote Hatchet about Brian Robeson Who's a 13 year old boy who had an amazing adventure in the um, Canadian wilderness alone and then he wrote because of it was so popular he wrote four other books um, that kind of made the hatchet Brian Robeson series and he wrote that through some of his experiences and using some of the real things that happened to him but overall, the stories are fiction. So he made them up. There are some true things that happened to him, but the story, the Brian character is made up um, and, and the whole series is made up too. So anyway, Gone to the Woods um, picks up with Gary Paulson, the real writer, and his life. He was living with his mom. His dad was in the military, um, so his dad wasn't around. He was stationed overseas in different countries and Gary was living with his mom and his mom really wasn't that great she um, didn't didn't take care of him the way uh, the way parents should so eventually Gary's grandparents said you should come live with us when he was just a child he was four years old five years old and his grandparents said you should come live with us in Minnesota. He was living with his mom in, in Chicago at this point. And so he got on a train by himself at four years old and crossed part of the country. Went up to Minnesota and took and got picked up by this funny guy in this real old truck and, and made it to his grandparents' house. Gary loved staying with his grandparents. His grandparents were terrific. They had a farm um, they had animals that Gary had to take care of. They had woods that he would go and explore. His grandfather would take him on fishing trips, and camping trips, teach him really cool things about surviving in the wilderness, and just really cool things about life in general. So Gary felt like he had his own room. He had people who were looking after him and really taking good care of him. Um, and he was really happy for a few years. And his mother called and said, I'm going to pick Gary up and take him to the Philippines where his father is stationed and we're going to live there. So Gary didn't want to, but he had to get on a boat with his mom and travel to the Philippines in, in the whole, all the way across the country. Whole Went, went across the Pacific Ocean to the Philippines in this big, huge boat, big, huge ship. Um, he got there, and 
his mom and his dad were fighting a lot and they weren't taking care of him. It was a pretty bad experience. But he did get the experience of living in a different co country and experiencing a different culture. So that was kind of cool to him. He came back in his teenage years. It was more of the same. His parents, he was living back in the United States with his parents at this point. Um, he didn't get a lot of love or affection from them. He kind of had to, to fend for himself. He, he took these jobs that he didn't really like so he could um, make some money and buy some food. And he spent a lot of time alone in the woods. He developed his fishing skills, his tracking and hunting skills, and really got a sense of calm and a sense of home um, that he found in the woods because he wasn't getting it with his parents at his house. So it's a lot of what this book is. And then the other really cool part. So he's in back in Minnesota, living with his parents, really cold winters. You know, we have pretty cold winters here in Ohio, Northeast Ohio, we get a lot of snow. They have really cold winters in Minnesota too. So one really cold day, it was before he had to work, Gary went into the library and he wasn't sure what he was going to expect. A lot of times when Gary went in places, he didn't feel welcomed. He was a, a teenager by himself. He didn't have his parents with him because they didn't really care. And a lot of times the, the adults or the employees of the place he was in would kind of treat him not so nice and sort of tell him to leave because if you didn't have your parents with you, then you were just a kid wandering about. But luckily, when he went into the library, he got warm, and one of the librarians really was nice to him and encouraged him to read and said, here, you can take, sign up for a library card, you can take these books home, and it doesn't cost you anything. So this is where Gary found his love of reading, found his love of libraries, and it took him a while. He was teaching himself how to read as a teenager. And as you know, as a great reader, it takes practice. If we don't read for a while, it can be kind of tough coming back to it. So librarian was really kind to him and really fostered um, a love of reading, a love of knowledge, and then eventually, he started writing in notebooks, telling his own stories about his experience in the woods. So Gary was born, like I said, in Minneapolis, Minnesota, all the way back in 1939. And the really cool part is he's still living today. He's over 80 years old. He spends a lot of time on his boat. And I think he lives in Arizona or New Mexico. Um, and he's written lots and lots of stories. A lot of them are for young readers, and then some are for adult readers. And I haven't read nearly all of them, but I have read Hatchet and the Brian series and a few others of, of his children's books. And then I've written some really, read some really cool ones, um, Dog Song and Winter Song, Winter Dance. Dog Song and Winter Dance are two of my favorites. Um, Winter Dance is about when Gary is older, um, he tries to run the Iditarod, which is um, a race in Alaska with husky dogs, with racing dogs. They, they take you on, a, um, on your sled and you have all your supplies and you're racing through the Alaskan wilderness with nowhere to camp and you're just there to fend for yourself. So he's had a really a lot of really cool experiences, led the life he wants to, learned how to read, learned how to write, and has really made a terrific career for himself and written a lot of really cool books that I still enjoy today. So I reread Hatchet last summer and for the first time in a long, long time, and it was terrific. It's a great story about Brian Robeson, who's a 13-year-old boy um, living in the United States. His parents are getting divorced at the beginning of the story. So he's going to fly 
up to see his dad for the summer. Um, his dad is doing research in northern Canada. So he's taking a bush plane, which is just a small plane. It's going to be him and the pilot, just the two of them, taking this small plane um, up to see his dad. The only problem is, on the way, the pilot has a heart attack and dies. So Brian is in this single plane alone above the Canadian wilderness. He doesn't know how to fly a plane. He doesn't know what the maps mean. He, you know, what do you do? What do you do? So he climbs into the, the pilot seat and starts trying to fly, fly the plane. He eventually figures out some of the controls and then he figures, I'm going to run out of fuel soon. I have no idea where I'm going. The radio isn't working. So I need a safe place to land this plane. And it's not a smooth landing, but he finds a, a lake where he can take it down. It's a crash landing. It's really tough. Brian barely survives. He makes it out of the plane. He swims to shore. Um, and for the next... 12, 18 hours. He's kind of waking up and then going back to sleep. It's slipping in and out of unconsciousness. Or slipping in and out of consciousness. Um, the bugs are terrible. The plane sinks. All he has is the hatchet on his belt that his mom gave him and the clothes on his back. That's it. No cell phone. No wilderness supplies. No food. No matches, no flashlight, no bug repellent, no tent, no sleeping bag. He is forced to survive with the clothes, his knowledge, and a hatchet. And that's exactly what he does. He, at first, he's really, really scared and really sad and doesn't know what's going to happen. But then he figures out, I'm in this. I There's no way to signal for help, so I better figure this out. So the story goes through him building shelter, him finding food, um, him using whatever he has to try and survive. And when you're in that situation, he stays put and stays around this lake, makes a cool shelter, uh, and, and has a lot of mistakes, learns from his mistakes, and, and really develops some really cool skills quickly because it's all he, he does. It, it's all he can do to survive. Um, so, so like I said, there's a lot of things that happen to him. He gets attacked by a moose. He eats the wrong berries. He gets really sick. Um, but through these things that don't go well, he learns how to do things correctly. He eventually figures out how to make his own bow um, and how to hunt. And, and he has to learn all these things. It's a really, really cool read. Um, and I think that because it happens to a teenage character, um, I think a lot of you would like it, especially if you like the idea of spending time in the woods or if you really do enjoy going into the woods because uh, it can be a, a pretty great experience um, you know doing what what Brian did is very extreme and very dangerous um, but we can go camping and and take the right supplies with us and have a really good time um, and there's a lot of peace to be found in the wilderness and I know that from firsthand experience. So anyway, Brian f learns a lot, makes a lot of mistakes, eventually finds a really great routine. He makes fire um, with one of the things he has, and that's a really cool thing. And um, just a really great story. And by the end, um, it's, it's a really cool way that he kind of gets out of the situation. <laughs> so Gary wrote this story fiction it's a novel based on some of his experiences but um, a really cool story and he gets so much 
fan mail and so much, uh, so many people asking about this story and saying they loved it that he says, okay, I'm going to write a second story. And the second story is called The River. So, spoiler alert, Brian makes it out um, from Hatchet. He survives and gets taken back to uh, civilization. And so the river is, after he's been home for a while, people, um, I think the, the government approaches him and says, hey, we want to learn from your experience. We're going to send you and a psychologist back to the same place with some supplies, and you're going to teach this psychologist how you survived. The only thing is, big problem happens, lightning strike, the, the psychologist gets knocked out. Um, he's in a coma. Brian has to figure out how to get back to civilization um, with the psychologist who's in a coma. Um, and he eventually makes a raft and takes him down the river uh, more than like 100 miles and to try and find their way out and find somebody who can help. Really cool story, The Winter. Third story in the series... Let's see. We got the river, and I think the third story is Brian's Return. And this was my favorite. So after you read um, Hatchet and the river, the order really doesn't matter after that, in my opinion. Um, Brian's Return is the last one that I read when I reread them, and I really, really like this one. So this comes up, Brian's... Um, got back to civilization for a while he, he finds that he doesn't really fit in he has a hard time fitting in um, and he kind of longs to be back in the wilderness it's funny that you know you're you're stuck for he was he was there for months um, in hatchet I think it was 150 days something like that uh, so you know like four or five months he was there and you would think after that time you would never want to go in the woods again but he loved it and he wants to return and that's what this is brian's return he has trouble um, getting along with people at school he talks to a psychologist to try and help him through that trauma and and those uh those experiences that he had the psychologist says you need to go back to the woods you really found something you really found peace out there and I think you need to go back there for like a vacation um, to decrease the stress level in your life. And so that's what he does in Brian's Return. It's a really cool story. He's using all his skills. Um, but of course, more problems happen along the way. Um, the one I, Brian's Winter is a cool one. Brian's Winter is the premise that what if he was never rescued? he would have to spend the winter alone. Um, so in, in Hatchet, he gets rescued in like September, early October, before winter sets in. And in Brian's winter, he, he goes through the winter, which presents all these problems. Um, and everything's so cold that you need a, a good shelter, lots of food, clothing that he has to make, um, and, and lots of other things. Brian's Winter is a really cool kind of add-on to Hatchet. Brian's Hunt is the final book that he wrote in the series. And it's Brian as a little older, all, still living in the wilderness, the Canadian wilderness. And he finds a dog, but the dog is injured by a big animal. And so the hunt is Brian trying to find this big dangerous animal. And it's kind of like the ultimate challenge. You know, Brian's been learning all these skills through Hatchet, his winter, the river, and his return. And now he's going to use them all in the final one, the hunt, to see if he can overcome the big challenge of this dangerous, dangerous animal. So that is my recommendation for Gary Paulson's Hatchet and Brian Robeson series. 
I can't recommend it enough, especially in the summer months when it's a great way to just kind of take your mind off of things, escape into this beautiful wilderness that Gary Paulson describes and that Brian appreciates. Um, and it's really neat to kind of put yourself in that situation and imagine what you would do. And who knows, it may spark some interest for you in the wilderness or um, spark some things that you've already experienced in the wilderness. And this is all to say that um, should you go out and just run and, and um, not tell anyone where you're going and go off into the woods, definitely not. It can be very dangerous out there. Brian comes near to death a couple of times. So it's very, very serious stuff, but um, there could be a lot of fun to be had with it. So my advice is to ask your parents, ask an adult, ask a brother or sister who's older, um, and maybe try and get a camping trip going, or maybe just try and get a, a, a cool hike going, something like that. Start with the basics, you know. Um, but read these stories, and they're great knowledge and, and might uh, send you out there. So that's my talk about Gary Paulson, and he's got lots of other, like I said, books for young readers and books for adults. And some of the other things that I've read since then are Alone. This is by Megan Freeman. This one came out not too long ago, and this follows a 12-year-old named Maddie. And Maddie told her mom that she's sleeping at a friend's house and told her dad that she's sleeping at another friend's house and she goes to her grandparents who are uh, gone on vacation she goes to her grandparents house her cell phone runs out of batteries during the night there's a mass evacuation of everyone living she's in Colorado living in her Colorado town and I think everyone on the western part of the United States so she wakes up and finds that everyone else is gone. They've relocated to a place that she doesn't know. She can't drive. Um, there's nobody there to help her. The self, everybody's left their cell phones in this like big bin when they were mass evacuated. Um, so this story of alone follows Maddie and her. She has a dog. Uh, who's her companion and how they survive over the course of years before eventually there's a resolution um, really cool story it's written written in prose it's kind of like um, poems so it's a really quick read but it's really cool the things that happened to Maddie or that happened to Maddie uh, in Megan Freeman's um, novel alone it's a lot like Brian, you know, she experiences some highs, some really bad lows, um, a lot of sadness, a lot of loneliness, but she survives on her own and that gives her a lot of confidence. So that's a really cool one um, that has just come out. Um, and then Eric Ryback, he was, he told his story about um, through hiking we have three major trails, huge trails in the United States. We have the Appalachian Trail, goes from Georgia to Maine. It's over 2,000 miles long through forests and spans, you know, like seven or eight states. And you can walk it. This You can walk it right now if you wanted to. Of course, it takes months and months and months. The other one is the Pacific Crest Trail. It starts in Canada very um, southern Canada you walk through Washington Oregon and California all the way down um, to the end of California into Mexico along the Pacific Crest uh, mountain range and then the Continental Divide which is sort of in the middle of the country and spans again from Canada down to Mexico and Eric Rybeck did all three of these trails and he wrote books about them he did the first one I read um, is called High Adventure of Eric Ryback, and that's his experience on the Pacific Crest Trail when he, I think he was just 17. He had just graduated from high school, and he went by himself and hiked the Pacific Crest Trail. It's a terrific, terrific story. It's full of a lot of adventure, 
and was really, really interesting to me. I read it a long time ago. He also has The Ultimate Journey of him doing the um, Continental Divide Trail, which is also a really good read. Um, let's see. Uh, Between a Rock and a Hard Place by Aaron Ralston. Um, that's, he was trapped uh, in a slot canyon in Utah, and they made a movie about it, I think 127 hours, um, starring James Franco. Um, and it, that was his story of survival. Um, John Krakauer is another one. He had Into Thin Air. Um, that's his account of climbing Mount Everest, the tallest mountain, the tallest place in the world, um, over 29,000 feet high. And for reference, the highest point in Ohio is like 1,800 feet. It's the highest point in Ohio. Um, less than 2,000 feet. Mount Everest is over 29,000 feet high. Um, so John Krakauer in the thin air, his climbing of Everest. He also wrote Into the Wild, which is a terrific story about Chris McCandless. Um, Chris, Chris McCandless um, explored lots of different places. Um, his great goal was to make it to Alaska and live and and exist in the wilderness on his own in Alaska uh, a really terrific story um, that a lot of people have heard about um, and then Wild Wild is one that I haven't read um, it's by Cheryl Strayed I hope I'm saying that right um, but it's about her real life account on the Pacific Crest Trail which I mentioned earlier on the West Coast um, and they made a movie about it starring Reese Witherspoon too um, so I can't speak too much to that but because um, I haven't read it but I've heard that it's terrific um, and you know that that has uh, uh, characters as well and and probably of the same vein when you're when you're out there on your own there's there's not a lot to fall back on you have to survive on your own you um, will have a lot of good parts you'll have a lot of low parts but ultimately I think you gain a sense of self you gain a sense of peace you gain you gain a better appreciation for the world that we live in in the world of convenience um, and and how we can rely on each other and what other people mean to us so I hope that you enjoyed that. Gary Paulson can't recommend him enough. If you're a young reader or an old reader, um, really inspiring, really cool stuff. And and like I said, he just wrote Gone to the Woods not long ago. This is one of our new books on the shelves. Um, when I saw this come in, I was so excited. And I read it cover to cover. Uh, really, really cool stuff. So I'm going to do this again in two weeks. I'm going to try and do three more of these. Um, I know I'm going to try and hit Nathan Hale's History Tales, tell you some about those, some uh, graphic novels that are historically accurate. Um, I've read a couple of those um, based on Lisa Starr's recommendation. Shout out to Lisa Starr, Burton Elementary. Um, so I graduated with a history degree. They're really terrific. Graphic novels, cool pictures, historically accurate, um, fun to read, but you're also gaining a bunch of knowledge too about really cool subjects. I wrote the I read the one about World War One and the um, Powell's exploration through the Grand Canyon. Both really cool. And uh a couple others that I'm going to feature are We Were, They Called Us Enemy by George Takai. It's about the Japanese internment camps. George Takai was a, was a young boy while this was going on, Japanese internment camps um, in, during World War II. And uh, March, there's a trilogy called March, um, which is about John Lewis. Uh, who was really active in our civil rights movement and his experience of growing up in rural Alabama and his ascension into um, a, a great government official 
He was in Congress. And his life and all that he saw change um, through his efforts and the efforts of a lot of other people too, fighting for social justice and fairness to all people. And then I have a, a cool one called Punching the Air, uh, a young adult book written in prose about a youth that was wrongly um, sent to a juvenile detention facility and his experience there and trying to make sense of things and battle through it. Um, so I've got some really interesting things in the works. So I hope you join me in a couple of weeks. Um, let me know your comments about this. Come on in. Give me a call. Um, share adventure stories that you like that I didn't talk about. I'd love to hear about those. Um, but yeah, just wanted to throw some uh, some great some in my opinion great book options out there for you. So I hope you're able to 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 check out some of these titles and read them during the summer uh, when we have some extra time. Um, and get out there and enjoy Jaga Parks, Ohio Parks, National Parks, um, explore and enjoy and exercise. So, hope you enjoyed it. See you in two weeks and have a great day. Jesse out.